This video is about where we're at with our biochar and our endeavours to make fertiliser for the farm with it. And we've come a long way with it. It's taken a fair while, but I think we're just about at the point where it's all going to be viable. We've got a couple of little issues. One is I'm still not sure of the best way to apply it, and we're going to do some trials on that this year. So with a bit of luck, after this year we'll know exactly what we need to do to really make it good. Here we're just collecting wood, which we've got miles of, and getting it ready to do burns tomorrow. We put it in this container and we find that works pretty good. We weren't doing that before, but we are now. So I'll get a few drums organised ready to burn in the morning. Here I'm just putting some char that I've made in little batches in the yards where the cattle can walk on it and crunch it all in to the hay and the manure etc and make fertiliser out of it. Stay till the end of this video because I'm going to do some experiments with the biochar to actually confirm some of the claims about it. We've laid char out in the yards previous to this, but there's more hay here now and a lot more manure in the hay, so we're putting more char and we'll be adding more as well in the next week. And then once it's all broken down a bit more, I'll put it in a heap and cover it over and cook it for a month or two before I apply it. Here you can see when I kick the hay back, it's got manure right through it. It just needs the char in it and that, that will charge the char and it should be really good. Here I'm just bringing the drums up and getting everything prepared to do the burn tomorrow. It's early the next morning and I'm just starting up my drums of char and as they progress and get going properly I'll add more stock. You can see here now it's a bit later and I've added more stock and I'll just keep building on this all day and at the end of it we'll have a nice batch of char. We're now going to quench the char. The reason we're using such a big container with a big flow of water is because it gets it in there quickly and does the job really efficiently. You could use a garden hose if you're doing smaller amounts but it takes a long long time with a garden hose so we've discovered this is a better way. You probably wonder why the water's so yellow. It's because it's got molasses in it. Not very much, but it has got some in it. The next thing we're going to do is clean out the cattle yards and all the hay and manure and urine and char that we've put in there, we're going to take that out and put it in a pile and recharge the yards and keep doing that in the next few weeks and build up our stockpile of fertiliser that we're making. This method, we're going to have to change it. It's not efficient enough and although it makes a really good product, it's just too much mucking around. So we're going to have to refine this a bit. We realise that. But at least it's given us a start to find out how well it works and we have ordered a new spreader to spread the stuff today so when that arrives and we get organised we'll be able to spread some and, and actually do a lot more controlled experiments with the whole thing. Here I'm just using the hay spikes to rake up 
all the stuff that's in the yard or the, the loose stuff. The stuff that's really compacted down and full of urine and, you know, been there a long time, like this here now, we've actually have to use the bucket on that because it's really, really heavy and thick and, you know, wet. But what I'm going to try and do here is actually stir it all in together as best I can and then I'll put it in a pile and I want to add some char to it because... I don't think this has got quite enough char in it. I was a bit lean with the char. Here what I'm doing is preparing a pad to put the pile of compost or fertiliser or whatever you'd like to call it on. And I'm just dumping out the char out of the barrels and I'm going to squash it a bit with the tyres and then I'll pick it up with a bucket and take it down and spread it over the pile of fertiliser that, that I'm making. Here I'm just spreading the char out over the pile of stuff that I've got just to add a bit to it and I'll blend it in in the next few days and obviously as we go along we'll be adding more on top of this so with a bit of luck before the wet season I'll wind up with a huge pile to put out. So you can see here although it didn't look like we had much char you can see it's plenty over this pile of stuff with what's already blended in. I think it's got more than enough there. Well, I've done the groundwork and we've just got to wait now and we'll probably, when I put that out, use some chook manure with it. We'll see how we go. I want to move on now and talk about a couple of experiments to do with the char and to just see whether some of the claims that are made are true or not. One claim you always hear is that charcoal holds water a lot better than dirt. One other claim is that it's got 300 times the surface area because of the cellular construction of dirt. Together with the cells and the surface area, it's supposed to hold water a lot better than normal dirt. We'll, we'll try an experiment to see if there's any truth to that. What I've got here is an amount of dirt and it measures on this Pyrex container four ounces and I'm going to put that in a funnel with a coffee filter and pour water over it in a minute and see how much water it retains and how much goes through and I'm going to time it and see once we put the water on what the difference is after a given period of time <coughs> Okay, so you can see here, I put the dirt in the coffee filter, in the funnel, and I'm going to pour water on it in a minute. And I'm going to do the same thing with the char. Okay, so you can see the char is up to the same mark as the dirt was. Okay. So you can see we've got char the same as we had the dirt. I'm going to put in an equal amount of water. It will be up to the four ounce mark again. As you can see, that's up to that mark. Right. So, because we can't pour both of them in exactly even, I'll do the char first, and then I'll hurry up as much as I can and do the dirt. <coughs> So here's the measured amount of water, and I'm going to pour it in fairly slowly. Okay, now I'm going to put the same amount of water in for the dirt, and that's the amount of water for the dirt. And I'll pour that in slowly as well. And, and the biochar actually has been in there a while, so we're just going to have to see what happens after a period of time. I press the timer, and we'll see what actually happens. <coughs> Okay, about 20 minutes has elapsed, and I'm going to stop the clock. 
I'm now going to measure how much water is left in in the each one. So if you look at this one, this is the where we started, and it's just below it a little bit. Now this is the char, and if you look, it's down here, and that's where we started. So as you can see, it's retained half of its water in that 20 minutes and this one and the other one was uh, was about there three quarter of the dirt's water I estimate had drained through and about half of the biochar's water so from that I would say that the char definitely retained a lot more water than the dirt and I guess depending on how fine the char was in that sort of scenario would probably make a difference because I think it would take the water up quicker and and seal up the holes in the filter etc. The dirt was a lot finer than the char. To do a really good test I honestly think what you'd have to do is pulverise it all up like powder both of them in a, some sort of machine then have them at exactly the same uh, dryness with, with a proper tester and then add the water and you know and then wait 24 hours and I think that would give you a lot more idea of the actual retention rate of either substance but from that quick experiment it's pretty obvious to see that the char does in fact hold a lot more water even with that rough test so I hope that sort of gives you a bit of an idea about it. This is just a simple kit. You mix your solution with, with what it, the thing and it gives you a colour and tells you what your pH is. So if you look around here, these purples are 10.9, which is really high. And if you look around here, this yellow is about 4, which is, you know, really acid. Okay, so what it says to do is to put a little bit of this on the white plate. <coughs> then it says to put about half a teaspoon of soil, but we're not going to use soil, we're going to use char. and then mix it in together which is probably going to be a bit of a challenge given that the way it is let that char soak that liquid up for a bit of and then it says to um, then it says to uh, put some of this powder on it and observe what colour it goes I'll just get a little bit of soil and put it here and just see if there's any difference. Okay, so there's the soil there and I'll just put a bit of this with it. So if you look up closely now, you can see this one here has a greenish tinge to it and that one's really dark purple here. And if you look at dark purple, it says about 10 and, and 10.9 and a half, which I'd say that's definitely at least that. And if you look at that colour there, like I said, it's, it's pretty close to the five and a half. It's not up to six, I'd say it's about five and a half. In our situation where our soil pH is too low and it needs to be sweetened up, in other words, made more alkaline, biochar should help a lot with that. You probably add a bit of lime as well, but I, depending on how much I add, it'll be very interesting to see what the pH of that 
actual stuff that I've made down in the down at the yards. When it's finished, it'll be very interesting to see just what pH it has got. Another thing that a guy told me was a good experiment to do to see the quality of your char, meaning that you had actually burnt all the oils out of it, was to rub it all over your hands and get them black and see how hard they were to clean. If they're very difficult to clean, there's still too much oil in your char. And I think that makes sense. I, I haven't seen that, but he assures me that that is something to check for. I'm going to get this bit of char now and rub my hands all in it and get them nice and black and get the hose and see how much it takes to clean my hands. I mean, you know, if you put black grease all over your hands, just plain water would not get rid of it. It wouldn't really do much at all. So we're going to see how much of it stays on my hands when I wash them with the hose. Okay, so I've rubbed it on my hands and now I'm going to get the hose and put it on and just see how, it, how easy it is to clean my hands and how much oil's in my char. I think they're cleaner than when I started. Perfect, no oil in that at all I'd say. Thanks a lot for watching this edition of Farming Live Australia. We'll see you next time.